In chapter 19, we're looking at the Claisen and Aldol condensations. Let's go ahead and look at problem 23a in chapter 19. So this is going to be an example of the Claisen condensation. In a Claisen condensation, we're starting with an ester and we're treating that with a base and an alcoholic solvent. So let's go ahead and name our major functional group in our starting material. So the side chain here is an ethyl group. So this is an ethyl butanoate. So we're only given one starting material. So that indicates to us that this is going to be a self Claisen condensation. So two of these molecules are actually going to react to give us the product. So let's I go ahead and identify the alpha hydrogens in this ester. So we have two of them. We have acidic hydrogens in the presence of a base, sodium ethoxide. That base is going to deprotonate one of those acidic hydrogens. So keep in mind this is a, a reversible process. I'm going to go ahead and show one resonance form of our enolate. So we can go ahead and show the actual enolate form in which we delocalize the negative charge onto the oxygen. So we're going to form a carbon-carbon bond, double bond and break the carbon-oxygen double bond. So this is the typical structure of an enolate. So this specific one is an ester enolate. It's the enolate derived from an ester. So as I mentioned above, this is going to react with another molecule of itself. So enolates are nucleophiles. They're carbon bearing a negative charge. So keep in mind we're also starting with a carbonyl group in which the carbon is bearing a partial positive charge based on the electronegativity difference between carbon and oxygen. So what happens is the enolate will add to that carbon. So we're going to form a carbon-carbon bond between this alpha carbon and the carbon of the carbonyl. Anytime we're forming a bond to carbon, we have to break a bond. So we're breaking the CO pi bond in this case. So this is the bond we're making right here. We're forming this tetrahedral intermediate. So we've gone from sp2 to now sp3 hybridized. This carbon is bearing two oxygens. So in this form, it wants to rehybridize back to the sp2 hybridized carbon. So this is the elimination step in which ethoxide is ejected. So we're going to lose sodium ethoxide, which is fine because we're, we're actually running the reaction with sodium ethoxide. So this compound is characterized as a beta keto ester. So remember we have the alpha carbon and then beta carbon. So the ester takes precedence 
The CO group is called a keto, so we have a beta keto ester. Notice that we produced sodium ethoxide when we rehybridize back to sp2 hybridized carbon. The actual driving force to get this reaction funneled from the equilibrium is the deprotonation of that alpha hydrogen. So remember that alpha hydrogen has a pKa of approximately 10. So the driving force is going to be the deprotonation of that hydrogen. Once you deprotonate that, you end up with this enolate structure here that is actually fairly stable. So the reaction will sit at this stage until we lower the pH by adding some acid source. And all we're doing there is reprotonating that alpha position. So our final product of this reaction is this beta keto ester as shown.